treasures, here's another story. This is the worst witch and the wishing star. On the back it says, be careful what you wish for. Winter term starts surprisingly well for the accident prone Mildred Hubble. The worst witch at Miss Cackle's Academy for witches. But when she wishes on a shooting star, everything begins to go wrong. And Mildred's secret wish lands her in the deepest trouble she has ever known. Oh, this sounds a bit uh, interesting. Squalling rain and a biting wind buffeted the pupils of Miss Cackle's Academy as they struggled to reach the school in time for the first day of the winter term. The girls' coats kept blowing inside out, then flapping around their faces like wet flannels, and most of the older pupils, who were expected to keep the cats sitting on their brooms at all times, had given up and crammed their cats into their baskets for safety. Mildred Hubble, who was not one of the best flyers at the school, was valiantly trying her best to keep Tabby, her nervous striped cat, perched on the broom just in case anyone was watching when she arrived. She had wedged Tabby between her back and a laundry bag stuffed full of books and she could feel his claws through her gym slip as the unruly cloak flapped and whirled above her shoulders. Oh, she yelled, oh, it's all right, Tab, we're nearly there. Hang on for just a teeny bit longer. Oh, wow, I didn't mean literally with your claws. Oh, Tabby. Mildred was quite right to be careful. Someone was watching. Miss Cackle, their kindly headmistress, and Miss Hardbroom, her ferocious second-in-command, were lurking just out of sight in Miss Cackle's study, watching from the window, as the girls wobbled or zoomed, depending on the gusting wind, over the wall and down into the concrete playground. Well, just look at that, Miss Hardbroom exclaimed to Miss Cackle. Mildred Hubble is the only senior pupil to have her cat on the broom, as stated in the regulations. Hmm, said Miss Hardbroom. Don't get too excited, Miss Cackle. I'm sure she'll manage some little disaster before too long. She usually does. Now, now, Miss Hardbroom, chided Miss Cackle. It's the first day of term and we must begin it with hope in our hearts even when contemplating one of our more challenging pupils. Down in the windswept courtyard, Miss Bat and Miss Mould were huddling together beneath a huge dripping umbrella in the shelter of the castle wall, directing the pupils to put any free roaming cats into their baskets, leave everything in the cloakrooms and go straight into the great hall as it was obviously far too wet to assemble in the playground. As usual, the first years, who seemed so much smaller with each passing year to Mildred and her friends, arrived on foot, looking bedraggled and terrified as they entered the prison-like school and heard clang as the gate shut behind them. They were all inside. To the flying pupils' horror, the playground was full of puddles so that the relief of arriving in one piece was ruined as the girls swooped and hovered, desperately trying to avoid landing on the water. Once the first book of rules of broomstick management is that brooms are badly affected if they are too near the surface of a large amount of water which can make them stop working abruptly. And the last thing anybody wanted was to crash land into a puddle on the first day of term when everyone was watching. Mildred was delighted to land safely. Well clear of a deep puddle to her left, she jumped off and commanded the broom to wait and hover while she reached around and detached Tabby's claw by claw from his rucksack-like position under her cloak. She shoved him back onto the broom next to the laundry bag, just in time to grab her best friend Maud, who had made it safely over the wall, but was now heading for a small lake along the edge of the playground. 
Maud was completely tangled up in her cloak and Mildred managed to catch her in the nick of time. Hold on, Maud, yelled Mildred, flinging an arm around Maud's waist and restraining the broom with the other. Tell it to stop or you'll end up in that huge puddle. Stay, broom, shrieked Maud, unwrapping the cloak from her head and seizing her best friend in a bear hug. Oh, thank goodness you saw me, Mill. You saved my bacon. Unfortunately, they were not quick enough to save their friend Enid, who lurched suddenly over the wall in an uncontrollable nosedive straight into the lake, which Maud had managed to avoid. Oh no, cried Enid, spraying a plume of water behind her as she collapsed into a messy heap of bags, cat basket and her cloak billowing up around her on the surface of the puddle. Now everything's ruined. Just look at it all. It's all wet. Enid's cat, who was locked in the basket, was yowling his head off as the water seeped in around his paws. The broomstick was floating in the water, looking as if it would never do any magic again. And Enid, though trying to keep calm, had burst into tears. Mildred and Maud helped Enid to her feet, dragged all her luggage clear of the huge puddle as quickly as possible. It's all right, Enid, said Maud reassuringly, wringing out the hem of her friend's dripping cloak. It's not as bad as it looks, and your broom will be fine as soon as we get it dried out. Hey, you two, said Mildred, suddenly. Oh, nice to see you again. She held her arms out, and the three best friends clung to each other in a big hug and jumped out in the rain. Unexpectedly pleased, despite the horrible weather, they had the long winter term ahead of them and they were back together again, the three friends. Come what may, they would have a good time at school this term. So, once again, borrow the book if you want to find out what happens in The Worst Witch and the Wishing Star. Bye for now, treasure.